All right, everybody, welcome back. And in this step, we're going to be taking a look at the metrics in the middle of the funnel. And we want to know if this uh, middle of funnel is producing new leads, new customers, all right, and growing our retargeting lists. So let's jump in. We'll take a look at the uh, content life cycle. Remember our goals in the middle of the funnel, grow that email list, uh, grow the amount of leads we're getting, grow retargeting lists, acquire customers. And to do that, we're going to use things like educational resources, useful resources, software downloads. What we're looking for is contact information. And then remember in the last set of videos, we talked about, you know, making that initial lead a, an offer right away in order to convert them to a customer right away. So let's talk about them. What do we need to measure in order to know whether, you know, all of this is working. So our metrics are number of leads or email list growth rate. All right. Number two would be offer conversion rate. So if we measure our lead, our lead magnet page, you know, we've got a useful resource. Let's say we put like a, a, a cheat sheet on a page and we say, here, do you want this cheat sheet? Put your email address in there. If I put 10 eyeballs on that, on that uh, lead magnet, how many of them take the offer? That's your conversion rate. Okay. And then the last one is retargeting list growth. Just like in, in all stages of content marketing, we're looking to retarget traffic based on what we've learned about them by their behavior. Now, uh, the other thing we might want to measure at this stage would be newsletter, email, open and click through rates. All right. Because in the middle of the funnel, we are starting to acquire leads and we're going to start sending them content to, uh, through email marketing. All right. So let's, you know, any, any email software or, uh, con uh, customer relationship management CRM is going to allow you to measure the number of leads and, and, and look at reports that show you uh, lead and list growth. All right. So if you're using a, a CRM, you might be calling them leads. If you're just using an email software like Aweber or MailChimp or Constant Contact, you might just call them, subs you know, email subscriber list growth. Uh, but if you're using like a, a CRM like Salesforce or Oracle or even a, a mid range solution like Infusionsoft, um, you might be calling it lead growth, right? So um, what you're looking for in, in terms of a metric is number of leads and email list growth. You should be able to pull that out of your email software or out of your CRM. What about that conversion rate though? You're going to have to, uh, do some, some work to, con to calculate that metric. So if we look on the left side over here, you've got the ultimate list of blog post ideas. Remember that this is a lead magnet. This is a useful resource lead magnet. And then on the right, you've got another useful resource lead magnet in the middle of the funnel where somebody would be in the evaluation stages of deciding whether to buy furniture from Ikea or should I go buy it from uh, Pottery Barn or wherever. And I'm, so I'm in the evaluation stage. I want this catalog, right? So what are the conversion rates on these pages? And these pages, by the way, are what we call squeeze pages. All right. These are called squeeze pages in the business because there is only one of two decisions that you can make on this page. One is to convert. In other words, download this and give us your email address or put your email in here and get the catalog. The other thing that you can do on this page is exit the page. All right. So a traditional web page is going to have lots of choices for you, right? You could click over here. You could read this. You could click on this navigation. You could uh, scroll all around and, and, and find all kinds of different directions that you could take. You know, think about any website homepage and how many different uh, paths you could take. But on a squeeze page, a good solid squeeze page, there's only going to be a couple of choices, either convert or leave the page. Now, of course, at the very bottom of these pages, you're going to have links to things like privacy policies, uh, maybe an about us page in the footer down here is generally where we put those. So there are multiple paths, uh, technically, but there is certainly nothing on the main part of the page above the fold on the, on the page that is going to allow somebody to get distracted. 
Everything is squeezing them towards the call to action, which in this case is download this, or in the case of Ikea is, you know, get yourself, get your catalog. So what's the formula for uh, middle of funnel offer conversion rate? Well, in the middle of the funnel, we're trying to get people to convert into a lead. And in order to do that, we need to measure the number of opt-ins that we get. So how many new leads did we get? So if you go into MailChimp or you go into AWeber and it's like, you got 50 leads yesterday. And then you go into something like Google Analytics and you look and you say, okay, how many visits did we get to this page in Google Analytics? And it tells you that you got 500 visits and you got 50 leads. Well, then you can calculate your conversion rate off of that. So let's look at an example here where we've got We've had 500 opt-ins, okay, so we got 500 new leads yesterday. Well, that's fantastic. How many people visited the page, right, the squeeze page? We had 500 people opt-in, 1,000 people visited the page, that's a 50% opt-in rate. That's a fantastic opt-in rate, but we've seen higher, we've seen obviously lower, uh, but again, opt-in, the, the, the conversion rate on your squeeze page has to do with how many people visited the squeeze page and then how many people opted in. It's a pretty simple formula to calculate. You want to see that number uh, improve over time as you continue to improve the offer or change the way the page is laid out in order to, uh, but you also want to just test different offers and see what kind of conversion rates you're getting on those offers. Now, what about middle of funnel retargeting? So when we're retargeting in the middle of the funnel, remember that you know, the whole goal in the middle of the funnel is to generate leads, all right? Now, if we can generate initial customers, that's fantastic, right? We're gonna make that initial offer right after uh, we, we send somebody through a, an opt-in page. But what about, what are we trying to do with retargeting in the middle of the funnel? Well, what we're looking for is to bring people back to this page. So let's say that somebody came in and they did visit this page, all right? They visited our opt-in page, but they did not visit the low dollar offer page that we make on the next page, all right? What does that tell us? What, is it, what do we know about somebody that visited this page but never got to the next page? Well, we know that they didn't take, they didn't take our offer on this page because if they did, they would have landed here. So we can actually set up retargeting to, to target people that did get here but did not get here and bring them back to the place that they exited our funnel. All right, so if somebody came here, they were obviously interested. If they didn't get here, it means they weren't interested enough to give us their email address. So following up with them and saying, hey, you know, uh, trying a different, uh, trying a different benefit or feature in the advertisement that we send them to come get the 212 blog post ideas. But what we want to do is target the people that have already shown interest in here but didn't convert and bring them back into the funnel. And that's what retargeting looks like at the big, at, in the middle of the funnel. So you can see here that we've got, a, we've got an audience here or you know, what Facebook calls an audience. It's really a retargeting list. We are able to run to 26,500 people. We are able to show um, that, that uh, have looked at the 212 blog post ideas landing page, but did not move on to the next step. That means that we are able to target this set of 26,500 people, try to bring them back and convert some portion of them into leads and hopefully into initial customers using that tripwire offer right after uh, the lead is generated. Now what about email uh, open and click rates? So once you start to acquire uh, leads through your lead magnet, you're going to want to start sending them new content via uh, your email software. And you want to start measuring immediately whether or not your click rates and your open rates, you know, where do they stand as a baseline and then measuring individual emails, trying to find the right content that works. Uh, in, in using your email software, you should be able to see, like you can see this one here in the middle has a dip here in the open rate. You need to look at that subject line. You know, the subject line that was written on that email 
didn't get a lot of opens. All right, it dropped right there. Why? All right, you know, your click rate goes up here in the middle. Why did your click rate go up? What kind of content were you sending at that stage? So measuring things like newsletter, email, open, and click rates, great metric in the middle of the funnel. All right, now in the next video, we're going to start, uh, jump back into our worksheets and go through the middle of funnel content plan. We'll see you there.